Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning. How are y'all this morning? Uh, My name is Natalie Avalos. My husband always tells me, make sure you say who you are because you think everybody knows you, but they don't. (laughs) I'm like, well, I knew them. So I was thinking. And then earlier he did that video and I just want to report to you that when he did that video, um, he thought that they would be in Guatemala. So we need to pray for them because they are stuck at a Houston airport. All six of our guys who are going um, to uh, help a missionary over there that generously, like he said, you guys gave at Easter time so that we could finish a project that was started there because of COVID. So when, remember COVID? (laughs) Who can forget COVID? Anyway, so two years ago, the people in Guatemala literally were starving. And Joel's been friends with this guy, um, Chad Bader, who we support now as a church. We picked them up during COVID because the villages there uh, were waving white flags or putting white flags out on their windows to say, hey, we need help. We're hungry. And so you guys generously gave two years ago. And we sent tons of bags of rice, bags of beans, um, all kinds of groceries over there, non-perishables that kept them alive and going. And because of that, the community, the little villages came together and they started a church. And so that was two years ago. A church was built and birthed through that in the heart of God because you guys were generous with your giving. And um, so now we're putting in that little church a kitchen and a bathroom. So that's what our guys are up there doing. But they're stuck at the Houston airport for eight hours. So they probably shouldn't leave uh, the airport again until six o'clock to get to Guatemala in the evening. So, and then Pastor Joel is in Alaska right now, and he was sent uh, by a good friend of his on a uh, retreat in Alaska. And I wish I was trading places with him. But anyway, he is there and we are here. So let's just pray real quick for our pastors, okay? Well, Father, I just thank you for Pastor Marcus and Pastor Joel. I pray that every plan that you have made for them today, Lord God, that no enemy, no weapon shall prosper or form in getting in the way of your will for their lives today. So Lord God, open the doors, give them favor in all things so that your work may go uh, forth, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And so anyway, thank you for um, being forced to have to listen to me today. (laughs) And then I want to say a little something about the give boxes. Pastor Marcus mentioned it. And Liz isn't here uh, this morning. She normally sits there. But I do have a new friend of ours here named Jenny. And this uh, week, we actually worked on these boxes. They used to be red. We painted them black, so zero dollars because we already had spray paint. And then Liz, who has a cricket, I called her and I was like, hey, I need a sticker for our boxes. And so she provided all the sticker for the boxes. So I was super happy that we had everything here and it cost zero dollars to give our little boxes a facelift. And I love that, right? How many of y'all like spending zero dollars? But anyway, I did want to tell you this, that the um, boxes are not just for the giving of tithes and offerings. They're also for your prayers and concerns. So we have communication cards in the back by the guest services. If you guys have a family member or something's going on in your life and you want us to partner with you in prayer, please put that in the box. That's what they're there for, not just for, you know, the tithes and offerings. So anyway, got that out of the way. I do want to say this as well is that I have been a little tired myself. (laughs) And one of the uh, things during this series that we've been talking about being tired, there's different levels of it. Joelle shared a little bit about um, the tiredness of um, how it feels when you're being pulled one direction to another. I'm going to be talking about getting tired of forgiving. How many of you have ever gotten tired of just saying the same thing over and over and over again, and then we get the same results over and over again. That's called insanity, right? Well, sometime in those insane moments, it takes a need from our heart that can only come from God to help us to forgive in those times. So I want to start off by telling you what I told my husband when he asked me to preach on um, forgiveness fatigue. He said, what do you think about forgiveness, Natalie? And I said, I want it. I need it but sometimes it's hard to give it. How many of you can amen with me on that, right? Sometimes it's hard to give it. 
So um, a friend of mine, and I talked about her at uh, the Cup of Conversation, um, she's a friend of mine that helped me start the church 17 years ago. We used to sit around and have coffee at um, Starbucks when the church first started. We didn't have a building. But now she pops in at my house at night, and we just chat about God on my back porch. So we started talking about this topic of forgiveness, and um, I asked her, I was like, when it comes to forgiving, because uh, recently, not too long ago, well, about eight years ago, she walked through a divorce process. And so I asked her, what do you think about forgiveness? And she said, you know what? Forgiveness is necessary if you want to be able to walk in forward motion. She said, Natalie, if I wasn't able to walk in forgiveness, I would not be where I am here seven years later in life. And she said, nothing or no one should have control over you when it comes to the idea of forgiveness. And she said, because we've all been given the power to forgive because of Jesus. Because he died for our sins, he showed us what the power of forgiveness can do. And I benefit from the power of forgiveness, and I bet you do too. Amen? We all can benefit from the power of forgiveness. So what does forgiveness have to do with the ones who need it? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> we must do it. Bottom line, that's what it has to do. We must do it. We've, for, we've been forgiven, and we need to forgive. So how many of you here have been parents? I'm going to raise two hands because I had three kids. If I had a third hand, I'd raise it. But um, anyway, during parenting, and I have to change the names on my notes to protect the innocent. That's what my daughter said. She's 34. She's our baby. Anyway, she was like, Mom, please don't use our names as an example. Our whole life with you and Dad being in ministry, you always talk about us, so use some other example names. I'm like, okay. So I'm going to use my neighbor, who Alex, he's back there doing slides. I'm going to use little Johnny. He has a little Johnny. So... During the time that I was um, raising kids, I found myself saying statements like this. Little Johnny, please put up your shoes. Becky, please brush your teeth before you go to bed. Marky, stop screaming. Mommy, 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 I'll come help you in a minute. For a long time, I almost forgot my name because I had three kids and it was constantly like, mommy, mommy, mommy. And here's the thing, if you're a mom and you're in a playground with a hundred kids, if your kid says your name, you know it's your kid. <laughs> you know, If your kid something does something bad on the playground, you want to ignore that they're calling you, <laughs> period. So you can be asked to come back to your play date. But here's what we know about kids. Proverbs 22, 15 says this, foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. So it shouldn't surprise us at all that our children struggle with doing the same sins again and again. The same thing we ask them to stop, they do it again. Don't do this or you're going to get hurt, they do it again. Doesn't that seem a little familiar? I remember one time I was telling my daughter, I was like, I don't understand why you don't listen to me. Every time you don't listen to me, you end up getting hurt. And I remember the Lord's voice as loud as can be saying, that's right, Natalie. Why don't you listen to me? Because every time you don't listen, you end up getting hurt. And so sometimes kids, if we listen real closely, we can hear the heart of God telling us the same things that we tell our children as parents. So we can say things like, stop jumping that off the roof one more time, little Johnny. Stop hitting your brother. This is the billionth time I've told you. Marky, stop screaming. I'll help you. And if you're like me, sometimes saying the same things over and over and over again, you get a little bit of tired. You get a little bit of tired when you know that you've already warned, you've already been warned, and yet you keep doing it. And so this is why it requires that we have forgiveness in our life. I wish I could have forgiven my kids like just the one time I told them. The one time, it's like, I know they're going to do it a hundred times, but just that one time. But forgiveness requires over and over and over again. Because every day there's a new day and God doesn't change. He remains the same, but we are supposed to change. We're supposed to get better and it should, forgiveness should be easier, not harder. So once I wish that I could forgive my kids of their sins and I realized that's not going to happen. It's not realistic that I think only one time. The Bible asked me to repeatedly forgive my kids, my husband, People driving their cars stupidly. How many of y'all have road rage like this girl? For years, I had a job um, <clears throat> where my 
my area, I was in sales and I sold an invisible product. Y'all, you got to be good to sell an invisible product. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> and my, um, my line or area that had to, was Fort Worth all the way down to um, Laredo. It was, it was a real big reach. In six months, I put 30,000 miles on my car, my poor little Honda CRV. Anyway, I drove that thing to the dirt. But during that time, talk about forgiveness. If you ever have a job where you have to be on the road with other people, it's pretty crazy. And I found myself saying things and then acting a certain way once I got off my car and I had to go meet a client. I had to get myself together because I was just stirred up. I'm like, I don't forgive them for almost pushing me off the road. I don't forgive them for giving me the finger. I don't forgive. I mean, the road is crazy, y'all. If, any, if you're a truck driver, I want to pray for you afterwards, okay, because it's nuts out there. So yet sometimes it's requiring us all the time. Yet I know Jesus put me up, put up with me, and all my mistakes of sin and imperfections. So why would Jesus ask any less of me? as a parent, as a wife, as a sister, and even a minister of the gospel. Because let me tell you what, just because you put a microphone on here and maybe a little bit makeup and get behind the stage with lights doesn't make you flawless. And it doesn't make you less real than anyone else who's sitting in these seats. I can tell you that right now. So I have to pr practice forgiveness just like you do. So anyone ever remember Peter's conversation with Jesus in Matthew um, the Gospel of Matthew 18, I'm going to read it to you. If you have your Bibles, if not, you can look on the screen. It says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sinned against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. When Peter offers to forgive his brother seven times, he thinks he's doing a big deal and a big service to the Lord. And Jesus says, You think that seven times is a big deal? Well, Christian forgiveness asks much more of you. How about 70 times 7? And it doesn't mean 70 times 7 in a month or a calendar year. It means every day, 70 times 7. So what does Jesus mean by 70 times 7? He's saying that you're not done after the 77th time that day. You can't just stop forgiving just because it's 78 times. You can't stop. Not at all. 77 is meant to be an infinitely large number, much larger than Peter or you or I could ever imagine. Essentially, here's what Jesus is really saying. If you love me, if you love me, then you can't stop forgiving. You can't hold that stuff in your heart. Here's what my friend and I were talking about that day on my porch. I was like, you know what unforgiveness is like? It's like building a prison that you're actually doing it. You're building this prison around you of unforgiveness, and then you're the one that's trapped. And everybody else that you're trying to forgive is doing their own thing, and you're the one sitting back in that prison going, how did I end up here? And I tell you what, Christ set us free with an incredible price of his, his, only, his only son, Jesus Christ, came and died on the cross for you, shed blood, took a whipping that you and I will never have to take because of our sins and he took all those sins on our back and then yet we want to make little prison walls because of what so and so or so and so said or did it's really crazy when you think about it I really think it's part of the enemy's plan to keep you from being the light that every single one of you were called to be that's what the goal is for him but for us it is to forgive so I tell you who can do this Here's the answer. No one. No one can do this on his or her own. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the word of God. We need to have a willing heart to be able to forgive 70 times, seven, sometimes even just one time. Forgiveness is empowerment. In our own strength, you as a parent, you as a husband, you as a wife, you as a child or a student in college, me as a minister, no one on our own strength has the power to forgive alone without the help of the Lord. We aren't good enough. We aren't patient enough. We're not loving enough on our own and in our own strength. But with the strength of God, the hope from heaven, and the power of the Holy Spirit within each and every single one of us, I encourage you that you can forgive. You can forgive.
Our encouragement would be too infrequent if it just depended on us. Our frustrations would be too common if it was just about us. And our unforgiveness comparison to Jesus, without him, y'all, it's just not there. So with my own power, I don't have the will to parent my children well. I don't have the power to love my husband unconditionally well. I don't have the power to forgive well by my own. Everything, everything is dependent upon God's love for me, knowing God's love, receiving God's love, and then turning around and giving God's love. I'm going to share a story with you that's very personal and hurtful in my life um, that my husband and I have been going through for the last 15 years. And um, if you were here at Christmas time, then you heard me talk about my daughter. Um, and actually, it's interesting. Her name means peace. Her name is Erin. And she's on a journey right now that's requiring a lot of forgiveness on my part, my husband's part. And what's sad to say is if she would only forgive herself, she could come back around and turn around. But um, we have a small group that we uh, have at our house, and it's just a very small group of people that come over, and we pray for one another. We study the Word of God together. And uh, one of the things that happened right before they were leaving, the people who were at my home, last Thursday, I think it was, or the Thursday before, they said, Pastor Natalie, how can we pray for you and Pastor Marcus? And I said, you know what? Um, you could pray that our daughter, who's 40 years old, who I had when I was 10. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've seen if you're paying attention. <laughs> Don't do the math. Anyway, she's 40 years old, and I said, um, pray that she gets arrested because she's out there. And my fear is that if anybody, um, she ran into anybody with the car that she's driving, she could hurt them. And that would just hurt my, I would be crying like that little baby right there <laughs> if something like that would have happened. I mean, I would have really been torn up. So I said, pray she gets arrested. Well, the next day, which was a Friday, she did get arrested. And she still sits in um, jail right now. And how I found out that she got arrested was I have a friend of mine, and she may or may not be here. I didn't tell her I was going to tell the story. But she sent me a text, and she said, um, Pastor Natalie, I wanted you to know that your daughter uh, was arrested um, uh, Friday. And I said, thank you for telling me. She goes, I felt so horrible to have to give you the news. I said, well, let me tell you what. The day before, we prayed she would get arrested. And she did. So I just want to tell you that your words where you think is bad news is a praise report to me because I know she's safe there and others around her are safe. And she said, well, the only reason that I knew is because I'm on this thing on Facebook called bustednews.com or something. <laughs> and then she's like, but I, it's not because I'm being nosy. She's like, it's because she has a son. And that was the only way she could find out whether he was dead or alive is by checking that every day. And if she saw his face there, then she knew he was living. Yeah. Folks, it's a sad way to live. It really is. But I tell you what, for the grace of God, I stand here now. And I'm able to forgive. I'm able to love. I'm able to believe that God has a better story for my daughter than behind those prison walls today. Amen. And, and not just my daughter. Maybe you have family members and maybe they're not like arrested in jail behind prison walls. But they have those prison walls I just talked about. They're walking around bitter with unforgiveness and then can't let things go. That is a sad, sad way to live. I've been there before, and it is a sad way to live. So I tell you what, I can't just tout about um, what I have done and haven't done without actually telling you that it is hard. So when we first started this sermon, I said forgiveness is something, I, when I told my husband that I said I wanted, I needed, but was hard to give. So in saying that, I'm going to share with you in this story I just talked about my daughter. A little bit after she was in there, the guy that she runs around with, which I've thought about calling my friends from back in the old day and saying, I have a little problem. <laughs> Let me tell you the address. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it did cross my mind, I'm going to be honest. But anyway, he reached out to me after this happened with my daughter, and I was struggling to give a word of forgiveness to him. This is the guy who 
I've watched her just, I can't just blame him. You know, you have to say yes too. So I don't blame him, but I know that he's not a help to her. He's not who God has for her. But I can't be my daughter to say yes and no to the things that she says yes and no to. So all I can think is that she's working on her testimony and one day it's going to be glorious. And I hope one day you guys will all be able to see her say, I'm free. But until that day, I have to forgive. And so he, the guy, wrote me this text. And he said, hey, Natalie, so-and-so, I just wanted to let you know that Aaron is in Comal County right now. We're trying to have the charges dropped. Good luck. It's probably not going to happen. Um, and he goes on to say why. And then he says this, she wanted me to tell you she loves you and misses you. And with some luck, she should be out pretty soon. And by the way, I'm sorry for everything that happened between myself and you and your family. I apologize for everything. I just don't want to be any more bad blood or hard feelings. If you're still upset with me, I understand. You have every right to be. But I don't harbor any ill will and just want everybody to be happy with everything. I hope you're doing well. Y'all, do you know how hard it was? For my heart to not say, look, you so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. <laughs> You've caused a lot of hurt and pain in our family's life. My daughter's a mess because of you. <laughs> I wanted to say all kinds of ugly things like that. But instead, I said, thank you for letting me know. Of course, you're forgiven. I pray she does turn her life around, and I pray that you turn your life around as well. Thank you for your apology. It's accepted. Blessings, Natalie. You know, in and on my own power, I'm not capable of showing that kind of forgiveness. But the God that I love and serve and who has forgiven me beckons me to give others the same forgiveness he showed me. Because those who have been forgiven much, loveth much. And I know that this girl has been forgiven much because I was never always this wonderful saint I am today. <laughs> Those of you who are laughing know me well. So anyway, that's why it's so important to hear what Jesus had to say. He said to forgive someone this often is not humanly possible, but it requires a supernatural act from God in our human hearts. It takes the working of the Holy Spirit, the dwelling of the Holy Spirit in us to turn us around so that we can forgive. So if you're frustrated and you're tired of struggling about forgiving or, you know, sometimes we just need to forgive ourselves, right? Sometimes we're imprisoning our own self. We're not able to let go of whatever it is the sin that so easily bestows you, we're not able to let it go. And so we think that God is looking down on us and thinking, you're worthless, you're this, you're that. No, every day he's thinking down and going, today's a new day and I have new forgiveness for you and I have new love for you and I want to take you places that you never thought that you deserve to go. We serve an incredible forgiving, loving God. And once you get to know who he is, when you're going through the roughest things in life, he's there. He's there to empower you with love and forgiveness to not just have for yourself, but for others. And you may say, well, how do I do this? I don't know what that looks like. I, every time I've gotten to a struggle or a place that I don't know what to do, I turn to the word of God. This is my only place that finds security for me that tells me the story of love, the story of forgiveness, the story of salvation, the story of transformation, the story of, you name it, it's in here. And not only will he point you to the story after story of how he handled life, Jesus himself, but your relationship with him draws you to this book. You're like, tell me more, tell me more. Have you ever been with somebody, maybe your girlfriend or boyfriend when you first got with them, and you would just sit there and hear every stupid thing they had to say? Because you're like, man, I'm just so in love with you. Well, guess what? 
there's not stupid things in here. There's beautiful things in here. And I'm so in love with him. I just like, tell me more. Tell me more. And when you get to that place, and all of you can, because he's waiting there for you, to forgive and to let go of others, it's just like breathing. That's how it can become. Is it hard? Yes. But remember, you want forgiveness. You know you need forgiveness. But then again, sometimes it's hard to give it, right? So James 1.5 says this, If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives you generously to all without fault finding, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. So he's just waiting for you to ask, Lord, how do I do that? He's going to let you know. He said, if anyone asks, without fault finding, he's going to let you know. Remember the reason God sent his son to die on the cross for our sins is because we could not do it on our own. So don't try to do it on our own. Try Jesus. He'll take you places that you never thought you could go. Remember what Jesus prayed. If he asked us to forgive, then he has empowered us with his ability to forgive. And when I say, remember what Jesus prayed, he told us and pushed us to in the scriptures, this is how we should pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, holy be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, not my unforgiving will, but your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And forgive me of my sins as I forgive those who've sinned against me and lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. When Jesus was being uh, betrayed by his friends, they couldn't even stay awake to protect him. He said, this is how we should pray. He has given us the answer to so many things. If we're just willing to listen, open our hearts and open our hands and just surrender. I remember a long time ago when I first got saved, I remember someone telling me about surrendering. I was 19 years old, and our story was much like my daughter's story. (laughs) So I understood this when this guy told me this. He said, he was a minister, and he said, uh, Natalie, he said, if you were walking off away from God and someone grabbed you in the back, but you didn't know who it was, safe or not safe, and they said, surrender (laughs) and get your hands up what would you do? Well, first of all, I thought, well, I'd turn around and punch him, which is probably what my daughter did for resisting arrest. And then number two, I would try to run, which again, she probably did that. But when you don't know the Lord, that's what you want to do. But when you have that tug on your back and he's calling you, you just like, I surrender. I put my hands up. I'm tired. I'm tired the way I'm living. I'm tired of being in a prison I created for myself. I'm just tired. And he gave us a formula. Pray this way. So if you're out there today and any of this made sense to you at all, and you're like, you know what? I want to be the surrender person. I'm ready for that step. Would you mind raising your hand so we can pray with you? If there's anybody here. I see that hand. See that hand and that hand and that hand and that hand. And you know, more importantly, he sees that hand. And that's all you need to see that hand. Amen. So let's go ahead and bow our heads and agree with our brothers and sisters who have said, yes, it's time to surrender. Father, say this prayer after me. Father God, I know I'm a sinner and I need you. I'm willing to accept Jesus dying for my sins I turn away from all the things I had before in life and I surrender to you so come into my heart forgive me change me be in me from this day forward in Jesus name amen let's give him a hand Listen, if that was you today, back there in the back is sweet, beautiful Leah.
She's the sweetest person you'll ever meet. She's going to have a little gift for you. It's a little book. It's called the book of life. Is Naomi in here? There she is. Sweet Naomi. Um, Years ago, I knew Naomi when she was a high schooler. Again, I'm telling on myself, I was working at 10 years old. (laughs) And uh, she walked into the doors of these church not too long ago. I hadn't seen her since she was a teenager. And she surrendered her life to God. And she got one of those books, the book of life that we're going to give you today. And here she is today. And God has changed your life, right, Naomi? I mean, he is just, she's a surrendered heart, y'all. And I want to say to all of you who raised your hand, you will be too. So... Thank you for coming today. I pray that whatever God lays in your heart through this message, I want you to ask yourself a couple of things. And here's the application. So, number one, ask yourself, who do I need to forgive? Who do I need to forgive? Forgiveness is the gift of freedom that we give to ourselves and others. And then number two, begin to pray to daily receive and daily release forgiveness all right it's so simple y'all it really is you know when we talk to your children back there and we're praying with them they soak it in like baby birds and oh if we would just be innocent like them in our thinking and receive what god has for us so i'm going to pray for y'all father i just thank you I thank you for every single person who is here, Father God, that at the sound of my voice, Lord God, whatever that it was that you were talking to them about, Lord God, I pray that they would not just be hearers of your word and what you've spoken to them, but they will be doers, Lord God. For in doing, we become anew. And so thank you, Lord God, that every day you give us, Father God, fresh manna from heaven so that we can continue We can continue to do your work on this earth. In Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen. Well, you guys have a lovely, blessed day. We will see you. If you are here for the meeting for the widowers or the griefs and the widow people, um, people who've lost, we're going to be meeting at the war room. So uh, find Kimmy and she'll take you there. We'll see you next Sunday. If you are ever in the Seguin area, Come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.